In today's tutorial, let's work on this tweed under wraps. This is an amazing poncho available by Yarnspirations.com. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today we're going to work on this beautiful wrap. This is called Tweet Under Wraps. And in today's tutorial I'm going to show you how to save money to be able to switch the yarns off just in case that this is out of your budget. This is such an amazing project. It is so cool and it is also available in three different sizes. So we have extra small to medium, large to 2 extra large, 3x to 5x and that is fabulous. Now the ball counts you can see it's 20 balls, 22 balls, 25 and that's because there's different kinds of balls being used in here and these are the Peyton's color wool just like so. So in today's tutorial I'm going to show you how to switch it off with another yarn that may be more affordable to you and still have a fabulous look all at the same time. So let's uh, go deeper into this pattern and let's show you what you're expecting today. So in today's pattern very much like most of the Yarnspirations.com patterns is that you'll see different colors. So you see extra small to medium is a red and then you have orange and then you have green. So whenever you're looking at a pattern like this you'll notice that the instructions are the same colors when they're asking you to do something different. So for example right here it says with a smaller hook begin the back edge and it says chain 103, 107 and 111 and I know what you're thinking. <laughs> Make up your mind already what do you got to do. You got to look at what size you're doing and then follow the instruction that is the same color of the size that you would like to do. So in second row there is no three colors like that so the second row means that all of them have the same set of instructions. So those colors whenever they become in a pattern like this means that a decision needs to be made and you need to follow exactly what it's uh, suggesting to do. So it's not a hard pattern if you look at it from that. So what I would do if I were you is that I would grab your fancy dancy highlight, highlighter like this highlight the ones that you're going to be doing because it's very easy to get lost in a pattern and this is a great way to be able to stop that. So in the next part of this tutorial I'm going to show you how to make it cheaper. Let me go through some of the math with you and then you can make a decision that matches your budget and lifestyle. So let's talk yarn. Your favorite subject I know when we have the Peyton's color wool. This is a 100% wool and this is the size ball that it comes in. It's a generous size ball and the colors are undeniably amazing. I have to say the Tweed Under Wraps the version on the, the sample is done with this yarn and you can see the color lines are absolutely incredible. But you know doing a whole particular uh, poncho or shawl or wrap with this can be very expensive and if you're allergic to wool then you're, you're basically out of luck with this particular project. So for this extra small to medium that I am working on in today's pattern I would need 22 of these balls. 22 of these balls regular price is 849 US dollars. So if you times that by uh, 20 balls it's 169 dollars just to be able to complete this pattern. So I'm thinking to myself that's kind of a, out of line. I'm not going to deny that. I'm a budget shopper. I love this yarn a lot but would you spend that much on doing a wrap? Some of us would but most of us would not. So what I want to show you today is that I want to show you where I'm doing a substitute to make it a lot cheaper and let me show you what I'm substituting with. So in today's pattern I'm going to be substituting with the Bernat Chunky yarn here and it I looked on the label and it calls for the same size hook that is recommended for this. So what I looked at it, look at the size difference of the balls. Of course this is acrylic so you cannot not expect the pricing of this to be in line with it because the fact is that wool is a lot more expensive to make and you know you have the animal fibers and etc. Being that this is more man-made with uh, acrylic it's cheaper to make and therefore they can provide a lot more yarn. A retail price on this is about 9.99 US dollars and what I worked out is that I would need a total of 1800 yards to do the extra small to medium and you can work that out on your own. And what I realized for the extra small to medium even though I would need 20 balls of this I only need 4 balls or sorry 5 balls of this just like this. Okay so what I have here is that 999 times 5 balls it gives you a total of about $50. So when you look at the price this is almost uh, about 25% of the cost using this versus the color wool. So you have some options and of course you just have to look for the gauge of the yarn in order to match. Let me show you what I've been working on behind the scenes and then you can see what you think. So behind the scenes I've already started this uh, particular project to make sure I understood the pattern. You can see the beautiful deep ridges here using the Bernat chunky line and of course the substituting is completely optional. The other side it remains flat. So I'm going to leave that in your hands if you would like to do a substitution. Uh, for that we are going to be using two size crochet hooks today. We're going to be using an 8 millimeter size L 
crochet hook. Let me just pull that on camera here. And then you need a 10 millimeter size end. So you need these two big hooks and because you're using big hooks and fat chunky yarn just like this your project is gonna go super fast and that I can promise you. So let's go back to the pattern and let's review a little bit more. So in today's pattern there's only two pages. There's one and two and on the second page it has this fabulous little diagram and I wanna explain what you're doing. This is a one piece outfit meaning that there's no seam lines on the top of the shoulders for this particular wrap. So that means that it's, you don't have any sewing to do at the top therefore you don't have to worry about anything looking uh, quite not right in the shoulders. So what I want to do is that I want to show you how to read this diagram because I went wrong and this is my second take doing it and I wanna show you where I went wrong because you can avoid the same mistakes that I was making up until right now. So as promised this is a one piece design. There is no seam line so if this was laying flat you'll notice that it is looking like a big square just like this. It could be a rectangle as well so don't let that fool you. So what you're gonna notice is that you're gonna have a line that's on the inside here and that is as per the pattern and I'll show you that in a moment. But what we're gonna do is that we're gonna start off in the back of this project. Okay so this is the back here and we're gonna move forward and then we're gonna do then the middle section, do the neck and then come back down the front and then finish it off with the front. But let me show you, see these lines here? Let me show you what that is on the pattern. So if I pull it like here, do you see these ribbing lines that you see along the edge and on the bottom? That's the, those lines right there. So this is what you're seeing all the way around. So when we go to start this pattern, let's put these side by side, is that when we go to start this pattern, we're gonna start with the entire bottom of your project. So the ribbing that you see along the base here is going to be what you're seeing here. Then what's gonna happen is that we're gonna get to that section. It's about eight inches tall and they're eight inches for all of the, the um, sizes and then we're gonna carry up through the middle and get yourself to the neck. Now once you get to the neck you're gonna be only doing it like here. Okay and then it's, it's gonna divide on both sides so you have like the one side and the other and we're gonna do those separately and then rejoin it again and do the other side all the way to this point. So you're thinking okay well what about the outside edge? Well that's next. So what we're gonna do then is come back and then do the ribbing that you see coming up and we're gonna get to this point here. So we're just gonna go all the way up like this, like that and you'll have both of those done and then we finish off in making the ribbing on the front side of the outfit. So essentially you have the one section, you're gonna have this section coming up, you have two sides and then you're gonna attach it directly to this project down here so that you actually have no seam lines at all. It looks like it's free flowing and then you pick it back up once you get up here again and it looks like that this outside edge is all part of the design of being all one unit and I think for that it deserves a lot of kudos. So that's what we're gonna be doing today and let's grab our crochet hook and let's get started. So as we begin we're gonna start with the ribbing right at the base here and this goes all the way to the total width of your wrap. So what we're gonna do is that all the sizes have to get you to do this for a total of eight inches tall but because it's nice and chunky yarn it goes really really quickly. The goal is is to have these beautiful ridges and the ridges are appearing on one side and in between you would think that they were back post double crochet but they're not. They're just half double crochets and because of that the other side appears completely flat just like this. So what we have to do is get you started on this configuration because once you get started it's really kind of easy because you just have to follow the ridges that go up. So using the smaller size hook, a size eight millimeter size L, you want to use your yarn. So you can use the color wool or uh, the Bernat Chunky. It's up to you if you would like to which ones you want to use. Create a slip knot and if you're doing the extra small to medium which I'm going to be doing the whole thing on camera today is that you have to chain 103. So the other sizes are 107 or 111. You can see that there's not much difference in the chain work. So I'm just gonna do a small swatch with you right now because I've already, already got started to make sure I understood the pattern. So you want to chain 103, 107 or 111. So please do so. So I'm just gonna do a smaller swatch. I should be counting but because I'm doing a smaller swatch I'm only gonna just show you the, how to get started. So go all the way to the end of your chain uh, as it states in the pattern and then pick me back up here and I will show you what to do for the first row. So first row is quite easy. We're gonna start off only with double crochets going all the way back across so there's nothing fancy about it. So I want you to count back four chain of the hook. So one, two, three and four. Turn it over and get the back 
uh, hump of that stitch and I want you to double crochet into that. Once you do the first one the chain will stay turned over and you'll have a beautiful edge on the opposite side of the bottom. So continuing to double crochet yourself all the way down to the end of the chain. So that'll be row number one. So please do that and I'll see you back here in just a moment. Okay, so let's just say we have our whole chain done and uh, of course mine's gonna be a swatch. So you're gonna turn your work. So now we're gonna begin the ribbing look that appears. So it's really quite easy. So um, whenever we're on one side it's gonna be a front post double crochet and when we're doing the other row on the other side it's gonna be a back post double crochet. So let's just show you how to do it. So the first one we're gonna chain up two and it never counts as a stitch in this pattern. It states that. So we have to come right into that same one underneath and we need to do um, a half double crochet. Okay, so always do that when you're going to start a row. So you're always gonna chain two and you're always gonna do a half double crochet. So the next one here is gonna go around this post here. Do you see that? Just kinda pull it and separate it. Wrap the hook going into the side and then back out the other side. Okay, wrap the hook again, pull through and pull through two and two. That is a front post double crochet. So the next post that you see here, that's just gonna be a half double crochet. So it's gonna be every other one is the opposite. So the next one then will be this again, a front post double crochet. So it's around this post and you see this half double crochet matches with that one. So you can have to skip anyway. You have to go every other one and do a front post double crochet. So therefore the next one is a half double crochet right into the top of the stitch. So this is creating the rib to be only on the one side and this happens to be the side that you're looking at. So you're just gonna continue to move down your project with just front post double crochets and half double crochets in between those. It'll take you a little bit to get down there but it doesn't take too long. This is a massive um, hook and big thick yarn so it goes pretty quick. So you're just gonna go all the way to the uh, second last one. It's gonna be a front post double crochet and then the very last turning chain is going to be only a half double crochet. So that would be how you get across the row after you get past row number one. So the ribs aren't really appearing too much right now because it's gonna be the next one that's gonna really make that happen. So let's turn our row and we're gonna be repeating rows number three and four all the way. So this was a row one and two. So three and four are the repeat then until we get to a total of eight inches tall. And what we need to do when we get to eight inches tall, we have to end on the wrong side of the project. So we just gotta be uh, watching for that, okay? So this is uh, considered the wrong side of the project which would be the, the back side without any ridges appearing. So let's uh, begin. We're always gonna chain two, I promised you that. But because we're looking at the back side of the project, the ridges are on the other side, we're gonna be doing all the, the post work on the opposite side so it's on the back side. So it's gonna be a little bit harder to see, okay? And it's a back post double crochet. So coming from the back around the post and back out the other side. And this is gonna keep the ridging on the other side. And then the next one will be a half double crochet. So the half double crochets are really no, uh, are really no, now no effort to get into. It's just these ones here in the back, they just take a little bit extra effort to get them. And once you get into the rhythm like I did, um, it goes pretty quick. So then you're just doing opposite to each other. So whatever is half double crochet, you're gonna keep half double crochet and whatever is one of those textured posts, you're gonna keep it that. So this one is a back post double crochet in that going across. Okay, so we're gonna just continue all the way to the edge, the other side. And so I'm gonna turn it over in just a second. Okay, so the last one here, do you see that it appears to be two? It's not. One is a chain two, that doesn't count as anything and the next one is a half double crochet. So ignore that, don't think it's two because it's not. Just come into the top and just finish it off with the half double crochet. That's just one of those things about that particular stitch. Let's turn it around, see? the ribbing all stayed in line with each other. So that was row number three, so let's do row number four. So row number four, we start chain two. First one coming right in, it doesn't count as anything so it's a half double crochet right into the first one, like there. And this time because you're looking at the ribs on this side, this is gonna be a front post double crochet to keep that ribbing on the front side. And then so the next one is just half double. And you're gonna work your way all the way down 
So as I promised you what you need to do is that you need to get this height okay from here all the way to here a total of eight inches tall and you have to finish off on the wrong side. So when you get your eight inches done you gotta be making sure that it's eight inches done when you're finished going across and it's eight inches on the back side uh, when you're ready to go. So when you start the next one you'll be doing it uh, starting on the front side of the project. And uh, I always have a hard time explaining that uh, concept but hopefully you get it that there's always a right side and a wrong side with crochet. And usually the right side is what people can see and the wrong side is as an opposite side of what you don't see. So coming up all the way to the to the other side here this is a front post double crochet and then the half double crochet is in the turning chain right there. So what I want you to do is continue until you get this to a total of, of 8 inches tall and then meet me back here and I'll show you what to do next. So when I last left you I told you you had to get to 8 inches tall and you take a measuring tape and you measure 8 inches. Now I'm looking at the wrong side. So remember what it says is that you need to get 8 inches uh, ending on the wrong side. So this ends on the wrong side. So when I'm about to start now I should turn it around and I can see the good side. I can see the, the right side of the project here. So let's uh, move on in today's pattern and let's move on to the next section of this and let's begin. So let's look more carefully at this pattern. So what you're looking at here is that you have what is appearing to be ribbing right here and then you have a change of stitch here. Now right here the bottom section is all one unit. So just right across the bottom is one but right when it changes to the stitch this is an extra unit that is on, added on afterward. Okay so when we go to get these eight inches done here we're then gonna continue up through the middle but just skip the outside last few stitches here. I think it's 11 stitches on both sides and we're gonna continue to do it going right up and over and we're gonna leave a hole right in the center in order to create the neckline. So after we get that done is that we're gonna come back then and add this in and we just sew it together uh, when we go to do so. So it's actually not a hard pattern to be able to follow. So it, you just gotta remember that the whole bottom section is one unit and then once it changes here it then becomes uh, one side and then another and then you have a basic right in the middle. So when you're looking at this pattern what's gonna happen is that the whole bottom section right here is all one unit. So if you actually were to draw a line this is all one unit here and then what we're gonna do then is move up and we're gonna just skip over and we're gonna do this whole unit in the middle like so and when we come back over here then we're going to then do the other side of one complete unit just like that. So it just really kind of makes a lot of sense when you go to think about it. Um, it's just a very easy concept in order to put together. So looking at the good side of the project before we continue we have to fasten off. So when looking at it I got my 8 inches done fastening off and voila. So this is the part of the of the section now where the side is gonna then travel up on its own and we're gonna do that afterward but we're gonna skip so many stitches right in the very beginning here in order to create just the middle section. So uh, following the instructions it says skip the first 11 stitches. So I'm just gonna grab this here on back Okay and I'm just gonna weave that in afterward with a darning needle. So counting the first one. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 and I'm starting right here. That's the 12th and I'm just gonna create an extra long tail so I can weave that in afterward and I'm just going to join it right in. Just join and I'm gonna let the straggler fall down so I can deal with that later and then we're gonna begin then working up across. So all we're just gonna do then going up is that what we need to do is that we're gonna chain up two. Okay let's pull everything nice and tight and then into the same stitch um, that we just uh, did with the slip stitch going in. So we're just gonna do a half double crochet in like that and then continuing along is that we're gonna slip stitch into the next stitch. So coming down we're just gonna slip in. So just in through and through you gotta just take your time with this and then the next one we're just going to put in a half double crochet. So you're just gonna do the same stitches going all the way across. So one will be a half or a slip stitch which is next and the other one is a half double crochet. 
So it's just repeating these two. Now you're not gonna go all the way to the other side just like you uh, skipped over to, uh, uh, sorry, just like you skipped over 11 stitches here right at the beginning. You want to crochet and you're gonna do that same thing. So slip and then half, slip and half until you get to the final over here and you go 11 stitches early. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 and see how this is happens to be a rib as well. So what I'll do off camera is that I'll grab some spare yarn here and I will place that inside that stitch. So when I get there I don't have to really pay attention too much. I can just simply just get there quite easily and I will just mark that. So just go all the way across then. Same concept I just slipped in the last one. So the next one is just a half. Okay and the next one is a slip. So I'm gonna do that until I get all the way to the stitch marker. So I'm coming up all the way across. You can see that the stitching looks different. Therefore it matches the photo and the very last one I've already marked is gonna be a half double crochet. So that means that it makes sense. So the next two rows are just a repeat of each other but they're both opposite to each other. So right where we did the slip stitch last time will be a half double crochet and right where we did a half double crochet will be a slip stitch when we go to turn. So let's turn and do the next side. Okay. So let's do the first one up. So this row here, okay, is that there is, is a half double crochet that is sitting in the end. We already established that. So this time when we start this row because it's a half double crochet, we're only gonna chain one and we're gonna slip into that one. Okay, this will get it started right. The next one is a slip stitch from the row below and so this time it'll be half double crochet. So it's just opposite. So the next one here is a slip and the next one is a half. Just like this. So continue along in that same idea. You just gotta watch how you're starting and just remember that where you started is always gonna be opposite to each other every other row. So please uh, do that all the way across. I'll meet you at the end and just show you the next row one more time and then you're gonna do the height then going all the way to the neck where you're gonna meet me then at that point and then we're gonna go on further. So I'm coming up to the other side and the very final stitch is then a slip stitch. It's like we chained one and did a slip on this particular row on it when we started. So let's start again. So we're just gonna turn it and this time it was a slip stitch where we stopped. So this next one then when we go to start up where it needs to be a half double crochet that sits on top of it. So you chain two to begin. Remember that doesn't count as a half double and you're gonna half double right in the first one. So it's just gonna be again opposite to what you had before. So the next one then is going to be a single or sorry a slip stitch and then a half. Okay so just be conscious on the, how you start your rows and then everything will work out and you'll see the stitch work is gonna come together quite beautifully here on the front of your outfit. So what I need you to do now is that I need you to go a total of 28 inches from here right here all the way to the neck. You're just gonna continue with the same pattern until you get to 28 inches tall. So bring your tape measure with you. Sit back, put on the TV and enjoy. And then I'm gonna uh, do that off camera. Now if you are doing the three extra large to five extra large, it's a total of 29 inches. So um, there's only a difference of two um, of an inch there. Okay, so I will see you back here and we'll carry on from that point. So welcome back and hopefully you've got 28 inches done from all the way from the base right where the ribbing is all the way to here and you have to end on the wrong side. So the, what that means is that when you go to start the next row that we're about to start the ribs should be facing up as if you're looking at it. So just think about wrong side, right side. Wrong side would be the inside of the outfit. Right side is what people would be looking at you if you were to give them the handshake. So let's uh, begin. We're gonna start on the right, uh, the right side. Make sure the ribs are facing up because the other side's flat. That's the wrong side. So let's begin and we're gonna do the shoulders and let's talk about that in the pattern and then we'll move on to showing you how to do that. So right now in the tutorial what we have is we have 28 inches and you will see that there's markers here and we have 28 inches and we're now about to start the shoulder. So we're gonna start the one side shoulder first and then you'll see that it doesn't fasten off so do not fasten off. You need an extra ball of yarn for the other side and we're gonna do the other side of the shoulder and then we're gonna carry on doing what you exactly did here in this section over here. So let's have begin. We're gonna do the one section. It is the right side shoulder and we're gonna be doing that next. So let's begin the right side shoulder. I want to show you a technique I just uh, thought about when I was doing it. We have to remember to count so many stitches. So I would tell you is that don't worry about counting 
as you're going. What I would do is recommend that you count ahead of time. So what I did is that it says to do some a set of instructions and repeat a number of times. So it says repeat a number of 14 times for the size that we're working on. But you'll see that there's other sizes so you either have to do 15 or 16 depending on what size. So it's hard to count when you have to do half double crochet slip stitch, half double crochet slip stitch. So what I would do if I were you, do you see these are, are these uh, columns going up? That represents two stitches. So if you count over by 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, that's 28. So this would be the equivalent of repeating two stitches uh, uh, a total of 14 times. So there's 28. So then what I would do then if I were you is that I would come to the other side and do the same thing from the other side edge, count back 28 and mark it. So what I have now is that this is where the he head will be popping out. Okay, this will be over the shoulder and so instead of me having to count and trying to make sure that I get it right, if you mark it ahead of time you can save yourself a whole lot of trouble. So let's begin the first row. For row number one you have to continue the pattern as is and take it to the stitch marker. So right now I finished off when I look at this I finished off with a um, slip stitch and so the next one if you look at the instead of instructions the first one's a half double crochet and that's just keeping the pattern normal. So you're gonna just do a chain up two which doesn't count as anything and half double crochet into that and then slip. Just like that. So you're, what you're gonna do is you're gonna do the same pattern concept all the way to the stitch marker and then let's meet back up on row number two and I'm gonna show you what to do. So you're not gonna go any further. We're only gonna do one shoulder first and then we're gonna come and do the other. Make sure if you are gonna skip ahead on me do not fasten off this yarn. Keep it on. We're gonna use a secondary ball then to do the other side of the shoulder so that you don't end up with um, cut yarn all over the place. So um, just continue to do that and meet me at the end of the row. So I'm coming up to the stitch marker which means that I'm gonna hit my repeat pattern and that was ending up with a slip stitch and then it says to slip stitch in the next one. So it's just right after that stitch marker. So let's turn our work and go for row number two. So for row number two it asks you to place a stitch marker at the end of this row when you go to do it. So I'm just got it here. So all you just have to do then is that you just have to continue to work the pattern as normal. So you're gonna chain up one Okay, and the first two which is the slip stitch and the slip stitch are gonna come together with the two together. Okay, so just put them together like this and then those two stitches just became one. So this gives a nice rounded off edge towards the neck and now you're gonna continue the pattern as normal. So you just have to look at what you're doing and just see where you are. So the next one here is a slip stitch. How do I know that? Because this next one is the slip stitch so therefore it must be a half double crochet in order to keep that pattern going. So hopefully by this point in the tutorial is that you can identify what is a half double crochet and what is a slip stitch when it comes to when you're looking at this project. So you're gonna continue all the way down to the edge and then you're gonna place a marker and I'm really not sure what that's for at this moment but you know what? You gotta put faith in a pattern sometimes and just do it. So just place a stitch marker and obviously if they've asked you to do it it's gonna be referenced again in the future and so we have to put some trust into that as well. So let's just continue to do this. I'm just moving my stuff out of the way so that you can see more here on camera. So this will be row number two and then looking ahead rows number three and six what we have is that we have to work the pattern evenly. So what I would do is three, four, five, and six so that's a total of four rows. We want to be able to just continue the pattern as normal. So I would write that down on a piece of paper. Check it off as you go because worst <laughs> case scenario is that you end up with a shoulder that is not in line with the next shoulder on the other side. So you wanna make sure that your counts are accurate when you go to do this. So continuing right onto the edge and the last one should be a slip stitch for this one. This is row number two. So what I would do at this point is place in your stitch marker right at that point and again I don't know what it's for. It'll make sense later on in today's tutorial. You can probably fast forward ahead to in today's tutorial in order to see what that means. So what I want you to do now is just go back and forth not adding anything. Go rows number three, four, five, and six and please do those four rows off camera or sorry please do those four rows. I'm gonna do that off camera and I'm gonna meet you on row number seven.
So I've now completed rows three, four, five, and six as the total four rows. You can see that it's moved up here just like this. You can see where I put this marker. So that's confirmed as well. So now row number seven, we only have two more rows left to, done, to do with the shoulder and then we move on to the other side. So this row is identical. We just continue to follow the pattern. I can see that I finished with the slip stitch and I'm going to do start off with a half double crochet. So here's the thing on row number seven. Row number seven, it says to do one half double crochet and slip stitch in the last stitch. So you're doing two stitches in the last stitch and this will cause it then to go inward to go behind the neck or in front of the neck. I think in front of the neck, yeah. So um, it's all depending on perspective I guess how you look at this. So what I want to do is just continue the pattern and I'll see you at the end of this row and I'll show you what to do at that point if you didn't already clue in on what you have to do at this moment. So I'm coming up to the end of this row and we're gonna be doing um, putting in two stitches into the same one. So here is the last one. So it's a, ha a slip stitch just like so. And then what we need to do is that So I'm coming up to the end of the row and what I have to do is in the very last stitch we have to do a half double crochet like that and a slip stitch. What this is gonna do is it's gonna start creeping be, uh, around the neck area. We have one more row to do. This is row number eight and let's uh, just turn our work. Do not fasten off. Please do not fasten off and let's turn and see what we have to do. So for number eight what we have to do is that it says chain one and it says slip stitch um, a half double crochet in the first stitch. So we're gonna slip and then do a half all within the same stitch again. So this is creating it to cause a round and you see that in the diagram too. And now you're gonna just carry on. So the next one is a slip stitch. So you're now just gonna carry on as the pattern continues to the other side. So that's all it is is gonna be for this um, for the right shoulder and then we're then gonna move on to the left shoulder from that point and then um, carry on. Do not fasten off. What I want, need you to do is uh, just pull up a large loop and do not let it come out and we're gonna start with the left one with the new fresh ball so that we can uh, do that and then we're gonna pick up from that point. So let's just get to the end of this and then I will meet you and we'll do the right or uh, the left shoulder together. So I'm here at the end of row number eight. What I want to do, do not fasten off. Pull up a large loop if you want to and what I would recommend is grabbing another piece of, of yarn Okay, if you got some spare yarn lying around, just take this yarn and just tie it around. And if you have a stitch marker, it'll also hold it in a position, but I kind of don't have that. So what I'm gonna do is just tie a bow tie with a piece of string. Therefore, it won't fall out on me. And I'm gonna start a new fresh ball and then begin the left side shoulder. So this is what it looks like at this moment. And let me just put it back upside the way that you would see it. So you can see it comes around Oops, you can't see that. So what's gonna happen is that it comes up, okay, it comes flat and then it comes starts to curve around and that's what you exactly see in the diagram as well. So let's uh, come back and let's start on then the other side for doing the left side shoulder and that's coming up next. So let's start the left shoulder. So I had you place a marker. We counted 28 stitches back so I went by twos. Now what I have to do is that I have to move the stitch over back one more. So we have 28 stitches. I have to go and I have to go to the 29th. The reason for it is that when I realized that I did the first one we had to extend one extra over to create kind of like a rounded off edge and so we had to do that. So that 28 is based on that dimension and you will have seen that, um, um, that in the instructions. So in this side it's either 29 stitches or it's 31 or 33 and you just have to look for that here on the pattern as well. So what I want you to do then is I want you to grab a fresh, a fresh ball of yarn. Don't get uh, anything else. Um, don't cut that other yarn and just uh, start with a fresh ball for the left shoulder and I'm gonna do that next. Okay so let's begin with a slip knot and that's just extra precaution for me and I want to start it up here like there and coming in and I'm just gonna attach it with the slip stitch. So that's your first slip stitch that you started with and now you're just gonna carry on in the pattern as you normally would. So the next one would be a half double crochet and the next one would be a slip and see how I'm going right up over top of this um, straggler. I'm trapping it underneath the stitches so you'll never see it. So I want to go back all the way to the end of the uh, row just following the pattern 
so that it keeps it in line with what you already have established here. So this will make it look like it's the same yarn strand even though it's actually a separate piece in order to do the left side. So I'll see you at the end of this row. So I'm coming up to the end of the row and I'm just following the pattern as normal. This is row number uh, the first one that we had started with. So this is row number one and now I'm gonna turn my work and do row number two. So row number two is starts off the same way. We're just con continuing the pattern as normal. So we're just uh, just watching what stitches are going into which. Now the only thing with uh, row number two at the very end of this row we have to put the last two together with the single crochet two together. So the last two stitches come together and I'll see you there in just a moment. When you get to the end of the row all you just have to do is put the final two together and we're gonna do that as a single crochet two together just like that. So let's uh, move along and let's do rows number three, four, five, and six. It's four rows just like we did before. Turning our work and just maintaining the pattern for four rows and please do that now. So I just finished off with uh, two together here. This is a, uh, so the first one has to be a chain two, half double crochet into the first one there and then the next one is a slip stitch and then just carry along. So please do this for rows number three, four, five, and six. So I have rows now one through six done and now it's time for row seven. See where I am in this project. This is so important. See this is the neck here and I'm about to go this way and then back. It's so important that you're in the same spot I am right now because when you come back you're gonna come down and then back and then we're gonna extend across just like this. Okay so let's uh, begin row number seven. So row number seven is that it's just like what we did before. You know how we expanded over here and made it bigger? We're gonna do the same on this other side. So we're gonna then just chain up one and in number seven then it's one half double crochet into the first one and then a slip stitch into the same one. So half and slip into the same and we carry along along the pattern as normal. So the next one's a half and then slip and please do that all the way to the end. I'll meet you at the end of the row. So I'm finishing up to the end of row number seven and we're gonna turn our work and go for row number eight. So this is a slip. Now we're gonna turn our work and now we're gonna do something slightly different in row number eight and that involves then working into this section over here. So let's uh, begin to do row number eight. In row number eight we wanna still continue with the same pattern and I want you to start the row as normal and I want you to meet me close to the end of where this is gonna finish off here before we get into the neck area and then I'm gonna show you what to do at that point. So as I come up to the end of row number eight, this is the final row of doing this. You should be heading back toward the center point of your wrap. So toward the neck. If you're going in the other direction, something is wrong. So you gotta stop at that point because it will not be balanced. So I'm heading back toward that point and I'm coming in. Now the very last stitch that you have here should be following the pattern. So there should be a half, or sorry, a slip stitch and a half double crochet. So now here's the thing. You need to get close to over here. So all you have to do is that you have to chain a certain count. Now these chains are different on depending on what side. So what you have to do, so now all we have to do is chain 17. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17. So all you can do at this point if you want to is that you can join that then to the other side. So just right and join it and this that'll conclude then that row. Okay so what you can just do at this time is that you can fasten that off. So here is the, the hole for the neck just like this. I'm going to finish this yarn off completely and I, I do want to use a darning needle to hide in this loose end as well. So all I'm just gonna do is just pull through. So now we're done the left shoulder. Okay, you now have the hole for then the neck and now right where we left off that other yarn on the other side. Okay, we're gonna release that and now we're gonna work then going across. Now all we just need to do, remember when I had you mark that, that one right in the edge? Remember I said I wasn't sure what that's for? This is to show you that from this point now going forward to 20 inches depending on what size that you're working on. Mine is 20 inches. From this point forward should be the remaining of the repeat pattern that you're seeing. So all I'm just gonna do is I'll show you how to work across this chain and then we're got to do um, 20 inches then from this point all the way to that section. So all I need to do then is just start the next row up. So this is where I had, I had just uh, 
tied uh, a, a stitch around it so that it would not let go. So this is the original right side of the project. So let's uh, begin and I'm looking at what stitch I had left with and it is definitely um, half double crochet so I'm gonna just uh, slip stitch in the first one. So I'm just looking at the stitches to tell me where I was when I got there. So all I'm just gonna do now is just work my way across and when I get to this section right in the middle with the chain area. Let me just move that in the view. I wanna continue along in the pattern as normal. So I just have to go slip a half, slip half and that makes a lot of sense for me. So let's just uh, get me to that point there and I will see you there in just a moment. So as I get close to this chain area right in the neck I wanna make sure that I'm grabbing the chain right where I want to and I'm maintaining the pattern of uh, slip and half, slip and half. So if I just did a half the next one is a slip. I highly recommend to you is that you get the back hump of the chain. The reason for it is that if you look at this side you can see that you have beautiful stitch work all here. If you only, if you grab two strands on the chain what's gonna happen is that it's gonna leave um, the look that the chain looks incomplete. It's just a personal preference. So this is a half or sorry a slip and continuing on the back chain so just grabbing only by one strand and then the next one is a slip. And continuing that same idea going across and this will make sure that the pattern looks consistent as it goes along this because this is technically a new section within your project. So after you get by this row what's gonna happen is that the rows are again just gonna be the same as each other and just making sure that um, you're just gonna repeat the pattern until you get 20 inches from the stitch marker that you left on the one shoulder on the right shoulder that I had you leave there. So it's really not a hard pattern in order to be able to follow um, so far it's so good and then once we get that 20 inches done we're gonna come back and do the side edging and then we'll do both sides of that and then I'm gonna show you how to do um, um, the remainder of the project down in the ribbing area. So I'm just maintaining the pattern going across. So I have no reference underneath on what is what and so I'm just kind of looking at the stitch work here and this would be a half. Okay, this would be a slip. Okay, so the next one is a slip and then the next one is a half just like that. Okay, so you're just looking for consistency and then this will make those lines then go up quite nicely within your work. So that's what it looks like at this moment. So what I want to do is get to the end of this row and then just quickly review and then we'll move on from that point. So as I finish up to the outside edge I want to tell you a couple of things. So you're just gonna go back and forth repeating the pattern 20 inches as I mentioned. What I also want to tell you is that if you fold this in half now and have this section fold over the other and then you compare it to the other side they should still be equal. So at this point if you've I've done a mistake here in this and you're seeing it going off like this okay you mean is that you may have missed stitches right in the neck area in order to um, keep it consistent. So just watch out for that and what I'm gonna do for you now is that I'm gonna do my 20 inches and I come back and then we'll carry on in the remaining of this tutorial. Uh, for doing the side edging and then the bottom ridging for the base. So just continue to follow the pattern of just uh, doing slip and halves until you get to 20 inches and remember the other side here is where your stitch marker is so it's 20 inches from here to the next section. So I'll see you back here in just a moment. So right now I'm finishing up to my 20 inches that I needed and that was from that stitch marker that was on the side that we left on the top shoulder and now this is 20 and I wanna finish off on the wrong side and I wanna fasten off. So how do I know the wrong side of it? What I have to do is just look for the ribbing that is over here. That is the right side here. So when I go to start then the other side the ribbing should be facing up. That's the good side of the project or considered the right side. So what I'm just gonna do now is get right to the end here. I've already uh, measured it off camera so I know it's accurate and then I'm just gonna finish it here and then I'm going to start. We're gonna do um, the side um, ribbing next just like that. Okay so that's it done and I'm just gonna trim my work here and then I'll do a better job than getting rid of it later. So now we have to concentrate on the divot areas that are in the side. So before we left these sections here this is where the ribbing is gonna come up. So we're gonna start the first one and then I'm gonna show you how to do it and then I'm gonna get you to do both and let me tell you a little bit about that as we get started. 
So we're now about to start and we're gonna do this side first and then we're gonna do exactly the same on the other side but we gotta make sure we're watching these ribs. These ribs should be facing up. This is the right side of the project. Right side meaning the side that you would look at if you were wearing it. So now we have to fill in this. So why did we not do this and this at the same time? The reason for it, this stitch height is different than what this stitch height is so you can't do it at the same time or it'd be lopsided. So what we have to do is that we have to start it right on the project and maintain but you're not gonna join it until the end where you're then just gonna whip stitch this together up along this seam. So what we have to do is we have to maintain this pattern here and it appears in the pattern that it's all like completely one and it is appearing to be that but in actual fact you're doing two strips. So once we do this one here we're gonna come to the other side and the other side we have to start in this section right here. We start here instead of on the edge and we fill it in and do it the same up. So how do we know when we're done at the top when you get there? You have to lay it flat and as soon as it looks like it's hitting to the end of the other side that's when you stop. So what I'd recommend at this point is that you would do that and um, you're just gonna lay it down flat and we'll get to that part in today's tutorial. So let's start the next part. We're gonna start right on the side. So let's begin and we're now gonna fill in this section here. We're not gonna attach until the end when we're gonna lay it down flat and once it's all laying down and in the same distance then we're gonna do it. So let's take our new yarn and let's attach to the corner. You're gonna do this the same on the other side. I'm just gonna show it to you here. So you're just gonna go right into the edge piece, okay, and you're going to attach with the slip knot. Now you're gonna chain up two which doesn't count as anything and you're gonna half double crochet into the first stitch. You've done that before if you remember when you did the ribs. So now you're gonna maintain what you've seen happen already. So all you're just gonna do is that, see the ribs are on the front side here? You're gonna maintain that. So the first one is gonna be a front post a double crochet. Just like that. The next one is a half double crochet. Remember doing that? So I'm gonna bury these stragglers down into position as I go. Then I therefore I don't have to deal with that later. And then I just keep on going until I get close to here and I'll show you what I'm gonna do there. So this is a double front post double crochet. The next one's a half. So this I think will go pretty quickly. Um, this bottom ribbon didn't take too long and you had to go all the way across. Here's just a small little section that you have to go around. So there you go. So you're just continuing to have double crochet across in that section. This one's a front post double crochet so it's every other one and I'm gonna get rid of this straggler down now so you can see it. So you can see the ribbing is gonna follow straight up. Next one is a half double crochet just like so. The next one's a front post double crochet and look so the last one here is gonna be a half double crochet and then that's where that's where you're gonna turn. So you finish it with a half double crochet and you turn. So when you go to turn it then you're just gonna like it was on the ribbing here. Remember you're gonna chain two, half double crochet into the same one because that chain two doesn't count as anything. And this time it's gonna be accessing it from the back post. So it's a back post double crochet and that'll keep that ribbon moving up on the other side and then the next one's a half double. So you're gonna do the same on the other side but the fact is is that you don't start off on the side edge. You have to start off on the edge that is closer to the project and I'll show you that where that is in just a moment. So this one's a half. I have to get used to this pattern again of doing the ribbing. And you're just gonna keep on going until you can lay this out flat and you can, sorry that's the wrong stitch. Uh, you have to just keep on going until you can lay this out flat and then it hits that other seam line at the top. And I'll show you that too as well when we get there. I'm not used to doing this particular stitch. Usually I can chat and do stitches but this one's uh, kind of throwing me off at this moment. Not because it's hard, it's just because I just haven't been doing it. So the last one is gonna be a half double crochet. So when I go to turn it, see the ribbing is then con gonna continue up. So I'm gonna end up with a little minor gap here which I'll sew together at the end and then you just keep on going until you get to the height of this all the way at the top and you can lay it down flat. So let's just quickly review the other side and then we'll begin that one next. So on the other side I'm not gonna physically show you but I'm just gonna show you where to join. 
So you're gonna join here and you're gonna do a chain two and then half double crochet in and then you're just gonna maintain the ribs like I just showed you and then stop, turn your work and then do the other way and do a strip going up this side as well. So you're gonna carry this. So you cannot start on this edge here. You have to start here because then the stitch work will not look balanced. So make sure you start here when you do the other side. So I'm gonna leave that for you and when I come back then I will have these strips done and then I'll show you what to do from that point. So at this point both of my strips are completely done and I've got them on both sides. They are already attached to the base here where we had started and I showed you how to do that. So now you have this gap in between and now you have to whip stitch it together. So I've got this turned upside down. How I know that is that the ribs are facing down on the table. So what I want to do is whip stitch this together. I want to make sure that it's nicely um, just relaxed as I whip stitch. So if I'm having to waist stretch it or it's too loose and it's gonna buckle, you gotta watch for that. You may have to pull out stitches at the end if you get all the way to the end and you realize that it's uh, way too long or if it's too short then you gotta restart. So you just gotta keep an eye. They say to safety pin it in certain areas here just to make sure that it stays um, balanced for you because these stitches don't match each other because it was a ribbing and this was the other stitches that we were working with. So what I wanted to do is show you how to do a quick whip stitch and you want to get enough yarn that can go all the way the length and do it on the back side. So this is the side that you would be wearing and not the side that people see. So this is my own personal recommendation for whip stitching. I create a slip knot on one side just like this and then I get to the other side of the strand and I put it into a darning needle. You'll need one with a big thick um, um, eye of a needle there so you can get this thick yarn through and just pull it through. So what I want to do is that I want to go in on one side. So just this is called the whip stitch. So go in on one side and just grab enough strands that you can see that it's gonna attach without causing it to buckle and then just pull through. But don't pull everything all the way through. You wanna stop when you get close to that slip stitch or is that slip knot. And once you get close to that slip knot, I want you to put the needle through and pull that through there. This will cause it to lock onto itself just like that. So what I want you to do is that I want you to move down this section and just coming across from each other. This is called a whip stitch. Leave the straggler down on top so it gets stuck underneath as you do it. And what you want to do is you want to make sure that when you're doing this you don't want to cause it to malfunction or to malform in any way and you just want it to be nice and relaxed. Okay, so this is all you gotta do. So you just gotta do this all the way down. It's gonna be boring if you watch me do it. I think it might take me about 10 minutes to, to do each side. Probably a little bit less depending on your speed and how fast you wanna jump. Just like this. Okay, so please whip stitch your sides together and when I come back then I will show you um, what's next in this project because we're really getting, we're well beyond the halfway point and we're getting to final touches really soon as well. So let's uh, continue along and I'll see you back here in just a moment. So now that my two sides are sewn together on the back side here, you can see it has a nice finish on the top. I'll put a photo right now what it looks like now that this is done. But now I gotta do the bottom ribbing. So the bottom ribbing then here for the front side needs to be done for another eight inches. The problem is is that the ribbing is existing here but not here so we have to create it here. So let's uh, grab our yarn and let's grab our hook and let's begin. So for the ribbing here we're gonna maintain what you see and for here we have to change it. So right when you did a half double crochet is when we're gonna do a front post double crochet and right when we did a slip stitch then it has to be a half double crochet. So we're now gonna create the ribs uh, look that as you go across. So let's uh, begin. We're gonna start on the right side. So it's the right side. It's the ribs facing up and we're gonna start right on the edge just like you had before when you were working on the ribbing and let's just join this new yarn. Chain two doesn't count as anything and half double crochet into that same stitch. Okay, so we're gonna maintain what's already there. So this is a front post double crochet and the next one will be a half double crochet. Remember how we did that when we did the ribbing? And it's just a really kind of an easy pattern to be able to follow anyway. So just maintaining what's there and the goal is, is then just to get ourselves in line so that we can get across the front face to create the new ribbing and then once you create the new ribbing um, look then it's just a matter of going back and forth and maintaining like you had when you started this whole project in the very beginning. So continuing along okay 
and I'm gonna get rid of that tail later. And going right in, so these ribs are gonna match each other going all the way down the side right to the base. So the next one here, okay, so we're gonna look at this. The next one here will be a half double crochet because there is a rib. Okay, so that's not even a question. So what we have to do is we have to look at it here and right when we ever, whenever we did um, a half double crochet, we have to just add this in as uh, as an example. So right now we gotta put in a, um, a front post double crochet here. This is right in between, this is where they're joined together. So we have to put in a, a front post double crochet there and you might have to squeeze it in. I'm trying to grab enough of that yarn strand that I can do that effectively. If I grab not enough, it's not gonna um, hold together very well. So it depends how tight you sew things together is how easy it will be. There we go, got it. Well, I almost had it. <laughs> Okay, so this will be a front post double crochet. So here's a new rib. Okay, so the next one is a slip stitch here and we're gonna convert that into a half double crochet this time. And then the next one here is a as a, a half double crochet. So you're gonna have to take your time and work yourself in those half double crochets along the post. Okay, so coming in through the side and create that. So it's a front post double crochet. So the next one then is a half double crochet and so then the next one is a front post double crochet around the half double crochet. So what I'm going to do is I, I need to take my time, I need to get a better camera angle for my, or a better angle for myself to work on this and what I want to do is take my time and establish these ribs now and the goal is for me is not to lose uh, the consistency of the ribbing look so I don't want to have massive gaps in between everything that I need to do. So this next one is a half double crochet and the next one here is front post. So there you go. So I'm finally getting to a more relaxed state. Good. I was concerned I was gonna have to fight my way all the way through it. So we're just gonna continue to work my way across and then once I get to the other side you pick up the ribbing again on the other side of here and just carry it right to the final edge and I will see you back at that point over there. So I'm now on the back of the other side here and I'm on the ribbing and I'm just maintaining the ribbing as normal as I come all the way across. So when you did all this, make sure it doesn't look like it's gonna buckle at all. It's still sitting nice and flat and it's all gonna be good. So what you need to do now is that you need to continue the ribbing just like you had been before here and on the other side. Just the, the same concept, uh, just going back and forth. You need to get it so it's a total of eight inches from here all the way to the end and I will leave that with you and then we're gonna come back after that point and then we're gonna start working on the collar in that moment. So please just continue to work on your project and then uh, meet me back here and we'll start the collar at that time. So just back and forth for eight inches of doing the ribbing. So now it's time to do the collar. So out of reference I'm looking at the back side of the panel now. This is the front side but this is the back of the panel and on the other side is the front. What I did for myself is that I put a stitch marker on the other side to represent the front when I finish the front just so that I don't lose track of which side's which. It doesn't really matter both sides are equal anyway. So we're gonna then attach the yarn and you need your bigger hook now. A 10 millimeter size N. You're gonna come to the middle of the back of the, of the panel Okay, so this is the back of you, so this is behind your neck and you want to attach it to the middle section, anywhere in the middle is good and you need to get 60 half double crochets all the way around. So here you can see the stitches here but on here you can't, you have to eye it up. So what I would recommend to you is that by the time you get to the middle of the front panel over here, by the time you come around you should have 30 half double crochets and then 30 come in then back the other way so you have a total of 60. There may not be 30 stitches in a row here. You may have to fit extra in but the collar is really quite bulky on this thing and it really makes it quite um, the, the centerpiece of your whole wrap. So you're just gonna attach your yarn and I used a slip knot to do so. Remember this is a thicker hook so it might take a little bit of extra work getting your stitches in because it is bigger and you're gonna chain two which doesn't count as a half double crochet. Coming into the same stitch you want a half double crochet and now I need you to go now 60 half double crochets all the way around. You may not get it done the first time. You just might have to just play with it a little bit. Again just be patient because this is the the, the part of the, the wrap that really makes it look great. So just put in 60 half double crochets all the way around. I'll see you back here in just a moment. 
So now I'm just joining it to the beginning. So now the remainder of this collar is so simple it's not even funny. So we're going to establish the ribs once again. Now the ribs are gonna continue to go around in a circle so you don't have to turn your work afterwards so you just have to match. So we're gonna start off with the first one here and we're gonna chain two and half double crochet into the first one because that half double crochet or that chain two doesn't count as one. So now the next one then will be our front post double crochet around the next post that's down below. You've done this before. You're gonna just start establishing this again. So you're just gonna go all the way around the collar. The next one was a half double crochet in the half double and then the next one is a front post double crochet. So you're gonna create these ribs all over again. So here's the thing. When you come all the way back around because you're not turning your work you're never gonna have to work on the wrong side anymore. So when you go to do any more rounds from this point where there's a front post double crochet there will be another front post double crochet to keep it all the ribbing aligned. Then the next half double crochet that is just regular is just gonna be a half double crochet. So you're gonna continue now to rotate around this collar until it gets to nine inches tall and then once your nine inches are done your project is done. So when I come back then I will show you then the final of just finishing it up and then that's it for today's tutorial. So just keep on going around establishing your ribs every other one and it's a half double crochet for the ones that are not ribbed. Okay so just keep on doing that and then when you get all the way around just slip stitch and just maintain exactly what you have and these ribs are gonna just pop it uh, pop up and look really good. So I'll see you back here in just a moment. So once you get your collar done which mine is now done and I'm actually tossing mine. Um, mine is, is acrylic so just be aware of that. I'm tossing mine into the steamer cycle of my dryer to soften it up because I did use value acrylic. Now you just gotta apply your buttons. It goes right through the two pieces so these are non-functional buttons so don't expect those to go through. You're gonna sew them on permanently and it will attach the front to the back just like so. If you don't wanna use buttons you can just use um, just use your darning needle and some um, yarn of the same color and just tack it through the same position and then therefore you can have a nice seam line going down like that. So that's it for today. Please enjoy your new um, wrap. This was a little bit of work for you. I know it was for me and I hope that you enjoy and until next time have a great afternoon. We'll see you again real soon. Bye bye.